some in-ear monitors that actually work for bass. I didn't believe it either. Let's check it out. So my experience with in-ear monitors being a bassist has not been great, <laughs> to say the least. I always feel like with most things live, we wind up getting the short end of the stick. Uh, and I've always just kind of felt that the sound quality was shallow. You didn't get the depth, clarity, and kind of the punch that you need to really hear your, your sound and to make sure that things are rolling correctly. Uh, the mix, the way the, the headphones sounded and the way the mix would come through just wasn't accurate. It became more of a pain to do it than it was just to listen to bad wedges half the time. And not only that, but it was just pricey as hell. I mean, you know, a lot of people would recommend me systems, but I'd have to spend up to a thousand dollars looking to get something like that. And I just walked away from it. Uh, but recently I've been looking into a lot of wireless things and a uh, quick side note, I'm going to be doing a number of wireless videos and looking into a few things that can help not only about your live rig, but some surprising applications that could really help you out in recording. I think the time has come and especially if you're working at a home studio, being able to set up fully wireless options to be able to track in small other rooms or smaller areas or be able to do silent recording, rehearsal, that type of thing. A lot of really interesting solutions that I don't think a lot of people are covering. So uh, if you're into that, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell on everything so you see when those videos come up. Anyway, back to it. But so while I was looking into these wireless options, uh, I noticed one that was getting a lot of good reviews and things. And then I saw that actually Doug Wimbish, an amazing bass player, a hero of mine, was actually shown endorsing them. And I went, I got to check this stuff out. And then when I saw the price on it, I said, I absolutely have to check it out. So uh, the people at X5 were good enough to send me out some stuff to check out. And I think it's definitely well worth a look. The set we're looking at for the in-ear system is the U4 system. And basically it's two units. You have a transmitter that's this big, no joke. The thing is, everything you need is actually on this and I'm really shocked at how much they've packed into this uh, form factor. And it's solid. This isn't like some cheap plastic housing. This feels like it's well built and can survive some travel and things. You've got your aux or line level, which uh, is going to make a big difference in making sure you got the right amount of boost or cut to go with whatever mixer you may be going into. Or if you're carrying your own live rig and you've got, say, an audio interface from a laptop or something that you're going out of with some backing tracks, things like that, this is going to go right in there. And they also include a little converter for quarter inch. So if that's all you have available, that can work right in there. And simple enough, you have a punch button just to be able to select channels on it. So you can make quick adjustments and it's, it's kind of idiot proof which I like that too, because on a dark stage or when you're having to make quick adjustments, that's what you want. Simple and something that you know exactly where it is, not a ton of buttons and switches. And then that goes to your receiver. And yeah, again, the, you know, this thing is just tiny and good and lightweight, but still feels pretty solid. Again, I like the functions on this because you've got one dial here that's uh, just for your volume. So you, it's intuitive. You can just grab it and it's a thumb. It's got a little knurled grip type of thing. So dial it up and back. And then you've got another punch thing here again for uh, selecting your channels and matching up. When I went to pair these, instant. Selected the same channel. They both hit on it. It was great. I was able to check things like the volume, make sure it had enough power and punch behind it to carry those bass frequencies. Absolutely did. Was able to get nice and clear and loud. And then I just started walking around. Uh, up in here, you can see about a quarter of the studio. There's much more space going on in the back. Everything was clear as I walked around here. And then there's two flights below this one. I was able to go down a flight of stairs, out down the hallway and still get a good clear signal. I actually didn't start getting real breakup until I started to go down into the second flight. And that's a lot of walls and obstruction and things. 
So I was pretty impressed on the signal and how clear it was, even with some walls and obstructions going on. And now the manual says as far as the battery life and the charging ability is that you can expect up to about five hours. What I did was just turn these on, put them at a distance from each other and just left them go. I came back about six hours later and they were still going. So it actually went beyond what the manual says you can expect. So that was a pleasant surprise there. Really cool. And both of these units charge off micro uh, USB, one in here and one in here. So that's a really cool option in that I didn't want another wireless set where I had to have batteries and then you got to have rechargers there. So you can charge this off a laptop, a power bank, whatever you have. So that's another great option and makes it even more efficient and less crap you have to take with you. And speaking of portability, I mean, you look at these two pieces and all this fits in kind of this little leather style bag that they give you. And this can easily go in a gig bag, having your whole headphone and monitor set up inside the front of your bag. I like that because if you're doing any kind of travel things or something, you show up at a gig and everybody else has got their in-ears and you don't then that makes a real problem because now wedges have to be done. Everything's got to be worked around you. So having something this small that you can plug in that easily really makes a difference in making sure that all your stuff travels together. And now we get to the most important part, and that is tone. If you follow the channel, and of course you do, you know that we spend a lot of time talking about sound and tone here and everything, and I'm super picky about my sound. I want to hear it accurately because I really think that how you play has a lot to do with how you hear your sound. You react to it, and it makes a difference in your performance. Not only that, but I want to hear myself in the mix the way it is, and if I need to make adjustments, I want it to be accurate. Again, most of the in-ears that I've tried absolute garbage when it came to that. I couldn't hear myself in it. My tone sounded weird or just weak. So that was going to be the ultimate test for this stuff. I was surprised. I was able to really get a good sound out of this and just to make sure that if there was a weak spot, I would know it would be the headphones and not what this transmitter and body pack were sending me. I decided to do a test and that would be something that I could show you too because it's kind of hard to demo something when I can't put headphones on you. So what I decided to do was record a loop of some bass with a good bit of low end, some high end definition, a good DI signal with a little bit of grit added into it and some things to see if my full tone would really carry over. And I put it into the doll back here. Then I sent it out, you know, press play, sent it out, sent it through the transmitter out to the body pack, and then took the feed out of the body pack back into the DAW and recorded the output to see how different they would sound. Now, what I did do is bypass all my mic pre's and everything, making sure it was as uncolored as possible. I knew it might not be perfect because converters and everything, they do have a different sound, but I wanted to make sure it's at least as close as possible. And the funny thing being, since there aren't really converters in the headphones and things, it would probably be more accurate. I might hear just a little bit of difference of it going into the DAW. So to show you the simplicity of this again, if you're going out and say you have a recording set up or a mixer or something, literally all you're going to do with this is pop it into one of your outputs, select the channel that matches your body pack, and that's it. You're done. So you either go in quarter inch, or pop off your adapter, and if you have XLR outs, it's even easier, punches right in. So you can see how small it is in the background, doesn't take up a lot of room. So that's really it. That's, that's about as easy a setup as it gets. Plug in, match the, the channel to the body pack, you're done. So that's how I ran this, and again, out of here where the headphones would normally go, back into the doll, and then I went and recorded it. So let's check it out and take a listen.
I'm really surprised at this. And as you can hear, I can not really tell the difference between those two signals. So if I do hear a weak spot, I know it's the, the actual headphones that I'm using and I need to change those over. I think I'm going to check out the T9s that go with these and give them a test run and I'll report back on that again and some other wireless options we're looking at. But I'm pretty impressed by this and the best part about it is if you follow the channel, and of course you do, you know, I always look for cheap gear alternatives because none of us are getting rich at this. So I went to their store on Amazon and I checked out the current price. As of this recording, it's $183 for this set. That's crazy. Seriously. I mean, like I said, I've looked at sets before that are, you know, it, it, over $1,000 just for an adequate setup. And I wasn't even happy with it. So you know, obviously you still need headphones with it, but 183 for the core setup, that's nuts. Uh, I'm going to put an Amazon link directly down below to it. Uh, it's not an affiliate link. I don't make money on it. This isn't me getting any kind of commission or anything, just so you can find it and verify the price that I'm given as of this recording. So absolutely well worth it. I think it's a great option. And again, you can go into some other things that I'm going to cover in the other wireless videos, but even if you're not on stage, being able to do things like take this and if you've got a home studio, but say being close to the monitors, if you're getting shielding issues or ground noise from your pickups, things like that, being able to just go into another room, send out a feed of the mix and be able to hear this, that's amazing. If you're doing vocals and you need to get into a booth and you have, a, you know, size constraints or you can't run a ton of cables all over the place, being able to take these and go into a booth and sing and not have to worry about the headphone cables and stuff, this opens up a lot of possibilities for not a lot of money. So really great option. I'm super impressed with it. It's definitely a part of my rig now. You'll probably see it around and uh, you'll definitely see it in future wireless uh, videos and demos of things that we're going to talk about. So check it out and Hit me up below. Let me know if you've run into the same problems I have with the wireless thing. If you've had bad experiences with in-ears, maybe some other tricks or things that you've come up with to help you out. But I don't think you're going to need too much with this. And let me know if you think that in-ears might become a solution for you going forward with something a bit more affordable. So that's going to wrap it. The X5 U4 setup. I will see you on the next one.